In this video, we'll talk about what really happens in the TIFR interview. This particular video is really requested by many of you guys. So I think this, this particular video will be really informative. So you might be having these questions in your mind right now before you are going to take the interview. So what is the basis of selection? What do they ask in the interview? How much weightage does the interview has in terms of selection? Does internship during undergrad matters during the interview process? Does recommendation letter matters? Does undergraduate marks matter? Do they ask question from SOP or write up? How to prepare for these interviews? All these eight questions would be answered in this video. So stay tuned till the end. We are going to break down each of these points and kind of bust the myths that are associated with these points. So this video is sponsored by Unacademy, which is India's biggest online learning platform, where educators throughout the India would help you to prepare in this journey. So the courses are at very low cost. There are also daily scholarship tests and all the link is provided in the description. You can find them. You just need to download the app, follow these simple steps shown on the screen. You can use my code AP10 to get a ten, uh, to register for free and go for these uh, scholarship tests. If you are not from a wealthy family, these scholarships would help you in your preparation journey. Anyway, you can download the app and right now, if you register within today, you will get a special bonus. That means if you take a 12 month subscription, you get a three month subscription for free. If you take a 24 month subscription, you get a four month subscription for free. And that's amazing. So register right now, download the app. All links regarded, uh, regarding this is provided in the description box. So check out that. Okay, let's get back to the interview. Let me quickly uh, give you an overview about the selection process. First, there would be Jezebel's exam. If you are watching this video, you might have cleared this exam. Second, there would be writing the SOP or scientific write-up stage where you need to write your specific and broad interest and you need to write yourself. This is a way of showcasing your interest to your reviewers or interviewers. Then there will be interview. There are three rounds actually. First round of interview is a brief screening method. Second, there is a elaborate interview where a big panel will interview you. And there will be a one-on-one -on -one session where you can interact with the scientist and ultimately you might or might not get an offer letter. Okay, so this was the overview. Now let's talk about how much the JGBILS exam score matters for the interview because many of you guys have a question that whether some of the uh, JGBILS mark has, marks has a weightage in the selection process and some of the interview might have a uh, Weight, weightage in the selection process but that thought process is not correct so the interview is the most important part let me tell you the JGBILS score or the JGBILS marks is not counted uh, for selection procedure so how it is important then so that marks in the JGBILS examination ensures you get an option to write the SOP and combine the, the combined SOP and the JGBL marks ensures that you are getting a call for the interview. The games begins with the interview process. So these are all kind of like a mock kind of thing before the interview. So the interview is the most important part. So the question is, what do they ask in the interview? And do they ask from SOP or the write-up? So these are the two questions that are really important. During the interview, they ask conceptual questions only and not informative ones. I'll give you an example. During the interview, the committee will ask you for preference. They would ask you that which particular topic you are comfortable in. So they are going to quiz you on the topic that you are most comfortable. They are not going to quiz you on some topic that you don't know. So you have to convey them that you are comfortable in this following uh, area. Let's say you are broadly interested in cell biology, but you really like membrane transport or membrane trafficking, something like that. Okay, if you don't know any information during this interview, you can ask them frankly that I don't know this information. Could you give me more clue based on which I can speculate or proceed further? That is completely okay. So write up an SOP ensures that your interviewers know that what is your interest and you are interviewed based on your interest and your stronghold. So that is why SOP is really important. It doesn't ensure your selection, but it conveys the review, uh, interviewer about your interest. So the question is, during these four rounds of interview, what do they look into the candidate? 
So that's a big question. So during this interview process, the interview committee looks at your thinking skill, your problem solving skill and innovation in your approach that you take for solving a problem. So these are the three most important things that would help you to get selected in TFR. So moral of the story, you need innovation in your thought process. So they want to know how you think in this interview. So the sole goal of this interview not to test your information mugging up skill. But the goal of this interview is to understand based on some information how you can solve a problem. There might be no solution to the problem but you can take some step towards solving the problem. They might ask that you think a newly discovered transcription a newly discovered protein has a transcriptional activity. So how would you test this hypothesis? What experiment would you do to test this hypothesis? These are some analytical question which would kind of like test your approach towards solving a problem. For sure, they're not going to ask a question like this. Define a transcription factor with one example. So these are absolute no-no. They are not going to ask you what is the rate limit, let's say what is the sixth step of glycolysis and what is the enzyme in this step. These are the questions that are not asked. Questions are analytical and hypothesis based. And uh, yeah, so these are pretty much conceptual questions. So in the last round, that means if you have qualified the second round and you are going to this one-on-one -on -one interaction session, it's actually not really one-on-one. -on -one. In Zoom, it would be one versus many. You are going to get an insight about uh, a faculty's lab and their research interest. You are going to interact with them. You can ask questions. It's also another way of like understanding the faculty more closely. You would be possibly asked for three uh, faculty members that you have to give option and with whom you want to interact. So these are not at all final choices. You are not going to be a PhD student in their lab. When you join the institute, there are rotations and there are stringent selection process towards a particular lab. So these are basically putative. So the goal of this particular round is to give you a better idea. So this particular round makes this interview process a two-way process. It's not only they know about you, it's also you know about them. So now you must be thinking, does recommendation letter matters or not? Or how much does it matter? So let me tell you the honest answer. Yes, it does matter. But interview matters the more. If you have a brilliant recommendation letter and your interview performance doesn't match with the recommendation letter, you cannot perform, in, perform well in the interview. Let's say in your recommendation letter, your referee has written, he can think really well. His thought processes are logical and he can his approach has uh, let's say innovation in that but your interview does not bring out that then there is no point so the key goal is the interview second question does undergraduate marks matter not really because they really know that there is a huge disparity in the marks distribution some in universities give a lot of marks where other universities even after giving a lot of effort, you cannot earn a lot of mar marks. So, so there is an overall heterogeneity in the distribution of these marks. So that's why marks really doesn't matter. What really matters is the interview. So after all these discussion, it, it is now clear to you the key step in terms of uh, selection process is the interview. <laughs> and that's why you have to really prepare yourself for the interview process. Now question comes, how to prepare for the interview? So obviously develop and practice your thinking skill. So logic and reasoning is something that you should have and you should be able to convey. So while thinking, the biggest problem that we face is we can think silently in our head, but we cannot convey the thought. They are not mind readers. So you have to convey your thought process to them. You have to bring out the thought process in the interview, uh, in, in that interview time which might be difficult for many of you because many of us, including me, lacks the good communication skill. So we have to practice our communication skill. If we don't communicate our ideas to them, how would they know? So this is one thing you can work on. So be it Hindi, be it English, be it, or be it any regional language, you have to convey your ideas, thought process, innovations in that idea to them such that they know. 
so language will not be a barrier in that part but it's preferred if you can convey your message in english such that everybody would understand anyway if you want to learn more about how to build up research aptitude you can follow my unacademy uh, class on that also i have a course I, I have a video on that how you can build up res research aptitude what do you mean by research aptitude you can click on the link in the i button to move to that particular video anyway thanks for watching uh, like share and subscribe follow me 